All right, you guys have asked for it. I'm delivering because I love you. The new part in the best records of the 1970s. We're gonna dig a little deeper in this one, not things you would necessarily expect. So make sure you stick around after the awesome Too Many Records intro and see what I picked. First up, we have Mr. Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney. They work together on this, Ram. Ram is probably my favorite Paul solo endeavor post the Beatles. It's right after the Beatles. It was in 1971. So it still has the like the energy of, you know, white album era Beatles while being very much a Paul solo project. It's psychedelic, it's weird at times, but it also has Paul's signature incredibly catchy songwriting, which makes it a worthy listen. A lot of people love Ram, but I also think it's a little underrated. Uh, I know he took a lot of pot shots at John Lennon on this album. Uh, I know that John John responded by doing a picture of him pulling back the ears of a pig that was, uh, in, I think, a postcard in some of the copies of Imagine to kind of poke fun at Paul doing this. Paul was, of course, taking digs at John and Yoko and things of that nature, as Yoko did break up the Beatles. But this is a really fun, interesting album that's kind of a landmark as Paul became a solo artist because forever he was just a member of the Beatles and then he became a member of Wings. But there's also a Paul solo career that is definitely worthy of listening to. You can find a copy of Ram fairly cheaply and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're a Paul McCartney fan. Well, let's talk about an album that many consider to be one of the best albums of all time. Seriously, go to Wikipedia and look at this album, look at the reviews, they're all perfect scores. Television, Marquee Moon. This album, is amazing. It had so much influence on the future new wave movement, but this was a post-punk band where this album kept some of the frenetic punk energy, but managed to come up with these really artsy, intriguing melodies. This is one that's not super easy to find an early pressing of, but I believe there are some reissues that exist. I don't know why my copy has this big yellow sticker on it. I don't think that was meant to be there, but I managed to find an original press for a good price, so I could not argue. Uh, Tom Verlaine, like I said, excellent vocals. And yeah, this is just a really good post-punk album that manages to be poppy as much as it is interesting. There's not much around that era that sounds like this album. And a lot of the stuff from 10 years later, you could definitely hear what they were listening to when they came up with their records. But Television Marquee Moon is worthy of all the praise it gets. And I think everyone should own this in their collection. Let's talk Velvet Underground. Lou Reed is an awesome dude. Loved his solo career, love his career at the Velvet Underground, and this album gets a lot of praise, but everyone says Velvet Underground and Nico is their best album for the most part. I mean, I'm sure if you're a deep VU fan, you're gonna have a lot of opinions about where they hit their stride, but for me, Loaded is my number one. Some of their best songs, Sweet Jane, Who Loves the Sun, I Found a Reason. This is just a very solid, kind of summery, great pop album that Definitely holds up to some early Beatles stuff and things of that kind of psychedelic era. And this version is a really cool reissue I managed to get on this really badass Starburst. It's this purpley kind of lavender, dark purple mixture. Everything about it is beautiful and the pressing itself sounds very good. I would like to find an original press one day, but I'm really stoked with this reissue and I think it sounds good enough to, to be content with in my collection for now. If you don't know Lou Reed, I mean, this is a great place to start with his stuff. Um, his solo album Transformer is also great. And then of course, Velvet Underground and Nico. But Loaded, I think, I mean, from the get go, it hits you with some catchy stuff and it stays great the whole way through. I know I don't talk metal too often on this channel, but this is some metal that I can get behind. Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Now my copy is beat to shit. This is not a good copy. All of the sides are splitting. Uh, the disc itself, if I remember correctly, was quite noisy. Um, it's not as bad as I remember, but it definitely has had some wear. It definitely had a previous owner that liked to listen to it a lot and maybe leave it in the garbage disposal or wherever you leave records. But one day I will upgrade to a better copy. I got this, I believe, for a buck, which is why I picked it up. But Master of Reality is one of the first ever albums in the doom metal genre, stoner rock, hard rock, whatever you want to call it. Ozzy and the gang are the kings of it. And this album is in contention for the best Black Sabbath album. Now, most people will say Paranoid because it had some of their biggest hits, but I think Master of Reality is just as good. It's a little darker than Paranoid, a little heavier at times. Uh, it's not quite as reverby as some of the stuff on Paranoid. And I don't know, I just think it's great. It's heavy music 
for people that don't love heavy music, if that makes sense. It's something where it, it's accessible. It's, it's, it's music that's heavy metal, but it doesn't push you away with anything that's too uncomfortable or hard to digest. It's really catchy, really good to kind of just zone into. Something about this record that I'm not really sure the story behind, there's a lot of different covers with different colors for the text. Sometimes there's like a rainbow color, some of it's yellow, it's red. I don't know why there's so many different covers, but there's a girl I follow on Instagram, Jen underscore Orator, and she's a big Black Sabbath fan. And she has a picture where she has, I think every version of the cover in the picture. It's really cool, so shout out to her. And uh, yeah, this is a great album. I think that Sweet Leaf, Children of the Grave, Into the Void, those are songs that will live on forever. And um, yeah, check out Masters of Reality if you wanna get into some heavier stuff, but maybe not dive headfirst into the heaviest. My final pick is Neil Young and Crazy Horse Zuma. Neil Young had a massive output of work. It's hard to kind of know where to start. Some people like his softer, kind of more poppy stuff from Harvest. Some like his heavier stuff he's done with Crazy Horse. This is a nice kind of middle ground. It came after, you know, On the Beach and kind of some of that stuff he did that was great classic Neil Young records. But this one in particular wins for me because it has Cortez the Killer. Cortez the Killer is this like seven, eight minute jam that has a crazy guitar solo in it. One of my favorite solos, I think in music history. And he does play it fairly frequently live, which is cool. I have not had the pleasure of seeing it live, but it, yeah, this album is just great. Zuma is a really good place to start if you're a little daunted by Neil Young and you like great guitar work and you're kind of like, where do I go? This is a really nice starting point. All of his work with Crazy Horse is definitely with merit. And honestly, I'm just waiting to find that Mirror Ball album he did with Pearl Jam in the 90s, but that's for another video. Zuma's a great album, and this is an early press. I don't know if it's an original press, but it's early and it sounds great. That was five more records from the 70s. There are a ton more from the 70s I have not talked about. As usual, leave a comment. Let me know what you think are the best albums from the 70s that I haven't talked about. I've done a couple parts of this previously. I will leave a link to those in the description. Check them out. If you like these videos and you like this series, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Subscribe to this channel and more videos soon.